So we, we were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome to Community Spotlight. I'm your host, Leah Hasledge, and today's spotlight is on the North Star Neighborhood Reentry Resource Center. Our guests are Ilya McGee, who is the Vice President of Community Correctional Programs with North Star, and we have Marcus Bell, who is the Program Services Supervisor also with North Star. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank so you for having us. First, tell us what North Star is. Uh, Marcus <laughs> So, North Star is a community resource center that we have that's located uh, on East 55th Street. So it's kind of similar in the heart of downtown Cleveland and it's open up to individuals with a criminal background um, as well as their family and friend members that might not um, have a background. Uh, we, our hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every Saturday from 9 to 1. Um, and we have a host of services that we provide to the community that all are free of charge. And what are some of those services? <laughs> uh, some of the services that we offer, um, we offer IDs for people who are returning, um, birth certificates, employment services. Um, we do GED education, um, housing assistance. Um, we have a legal uh, councils that come in and do do work with some of the individuals in the community. Um, so it's a wide array of services that we offer that's free to the community and that is also free to individuals and their families and, and friends. So it's, it's a very welcoming um, center and you can get a multitude of, of services. Now how does an individual that has had a criminal background um, or, and even people maybe that haven't, how do they access these services? So um, one way um, to get the word out or let the clients know about our services and programs, we kind of begin with meeting them where they are. So we, ended, we sometimes engage individuals while still incarcerated. So we attend a lot of community events, uh, resource fairs. So we go inside the prisons and institutions and meet with the guys and the young ladies to let them know what we offer. Um, as well as in the community, we go out, we do pass out flyers, uh, we send out emails, we create um, brochures and we just pass the word out and me and my staff will go out. I have an outreach liaison that goes out and we engage the community, um, go to local shelter, etc. So that's how you find out about the program. So then word of mouth. And in addition, they have, people have the opportunity to go to the United Way 211 helpline in which um, the helpline gives them information on a variety of services and needs that they may uh, have. Um, in order to present locations and, and where they can get the assistance from. So that's, that's been helpful and again North Star with us going out in the community and really talking to the people and telling them about what we do. Yeah. What are some of the main barriers that you find people having when they're re-entering? Um, some of the things that we've seen um, over the years, um, definitely employment, housing, um, education. Those are the big three. Um, some of the, our primary focus has been on those three areas mm -hmm. in addition to one of the what we think is the fourth one is um, identification and 
you know, we think that's important because allowing or assisting someone in getting their identification is the first step for them really working towards uh, meeting some of the goals that they may have. You never would have thought about ID. Yes, it's, it's major. Everywhere you go, you know, uh, programs and agencies are asking for identification to assure that you, you are who you are and, and to account for the services that's being rendered. Why don't they have ID? So, it's, when they get released from prison, um, they get a prison release card. It's like a green card that they give them. They usually typically have their ID, their release date, and their name information on there. But sometimes, depending on the client, how long they might have been in prison, they no longer have a Ohio State ID. It might have expired within the time. They might have been lost through transition from, say, county jail to prison. Um, their family members or loved ones may not live where they used to live. They might have lost it. So that's the biggest thing is coming out, trying to give them identification. Because without identification, you can't get housing, can't get employment, et cetera. So that's one of our key programs that we offer at North Star is vouchers. So we actually give them vouchers that cover the costs for their ID and their birth certificates here in the state of Ohio. So they can have been born anywhere, whether it was in Cleveland, Youngstown, et cetera. And we will write them a voucher and we pay that cost for them. Um, and then that's just, like I say, that minimizes one of the many barriers that they have. That's um, wonderful mm -hmm. that you guys do that. Yeah. Now you had mentioned employment. Now when it comes to reentering, what are some things you've heard from employers that, that do or don't take on people that have had a criminal background? Well, we, we've had the opportunity to work with a wide variety of, of employers. Some of the, the really good things that we've heard is when c linking uh, individuals that are returning is the ability for them to just, they're working hard, they're, they're there every day, you know, they're willing to learn, and they're really they're willing to to put forth the effort to maintain the jobs. Um, some of the barriers that have uh, surrounded those individuals that employers have to deal with is um, a lot of the people relapsing, going back to those old behaviors, and with the old behaviors come the lack of responsibility and the lack of discipline for getting to the job and doing the right things, coming late. Um, overall. You know, the people that we've worked with and, and really maintain those relationships with the employers have been very satisfied with the, the individuals that have come there because they're hard workers and they've been given an opportunity to to succeed. And, you know, that, that's that been huge and it plays a, a role not only with the individual, but it's a, it's a great assistance to the family and, that they're returning to. Are there specific organizations or employers that you generally work with that are very open to working with people that have been incarcerated? So yeah, so we work with several different um, staff and agencies throughout the state of Ohio. We also have other programs um, that help us with employment. So some of them may be like tour deployment, um, CEOGC. We work with Ohio Means Jobs down on Boulevard mm -hmm. um, to help place our clients and also help them with the wraparound supportive services. So not only do we know that our clients need employment, Sometimes they also need those supportive services. So I might need work clothes, work shoes, um, bus passes, gas cards, et cetera, to get home. Um, so we work with those agencies as well as we have staff that's at Northstar that go out and we build relationships with different employers. Um, some of the employers that we work with, the different type of employers, it might be manufacturing, um, customer service, um, janitorial, um, labor jobs, and culinary. They, oh yeah, culinary. Yeah. And they open up to the clients coming in. Of course, they have stipulations, um, but they're not really strict. It's basically, they just want to see that the clients are dedicated, um, that they're motivated to change, and they're willing to change, and they want to work. Um, a lot of our clients, believe it or not, I know it's a false pretense that they feel like once you get out, you might get minimum wage. A lot of our clients get paid more than minimum wage to work these jobs as well. So. It's a good thing. It's a stepping stone for them, yeah. um, and it helps them become law-abiding citizens of their community again. So a, a right that we all have as Americans is the right to vote. Now, mm -hmm. someone with a criminal background, are they eligible to vote yes. during or after incarceration? So yes. So um, that's another stigma that we have. So once an individual is released from a penal institution, which is basically a prison or a county jail, they are allowed to cast a vote at any time. Um, no matter if they have a background, no matter what type of background they have, they are allowed to vote. Um, it's just simple as um, we have 
uh, forms at Northstar. Uh, we have voter registration forms. We have actual um, educational forms where people come in and educate our clients on once you're released from prison, you are allowed to vote. You just can't be in an institution. So you still have the same rights and everything that you had prior to incarceration, post-incarceration. So they, they are allowed to re-register. Um, the And people on probation, parole, that are in a halfway house are eligible for um, re-registering for, for the opportunity to vote. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Yes, very. Now, in Cuyahoga County, are there programs that help those that are coming out of jail to kind of get back on their feet? Yes. So, in Cuyahoga County, Cuyahoga County is actually a unique county throughout the state of Ohio um, because we actually have a government office that's geared towards um, helping individuals with a background. It's actually called Cuyahoga County Office of Reentry. Um, and it's an office that's geared towards helping individuals that's returning from prison, whether it was today or 100 years ago, get back on their feet and get linked with the services. Um, other unique programs, of course, is North Star. So I can't leave North Star. We are <laughs> right. So they can come to North Star, and we have an array of services. Uh, we consider ourselves a one-stop shop. So a lot of people say, well, why do you say one-stop shop? So as many times when people got out of prison or situations, they already been funneled so many places, go to probation, go here, go there, go there. So at North Star, we try to have as many services available under one roof so we don't have to keep funneling them out. But in the instance that we do have, we do have a handful of partners that we refer them to. So like I said in the past, with employment, we can send them to like towards employment or Ohio means, or we have in-house job leads and stuff that we can give them there. Um, if they need clothing, we have a clothing closet in our back, but oh. we also partner with Goodwill to get clothing vouchers to get them some clothing. Um, so. There's several programs out here that's anywhere from employment to housing needs to um, financial needs that we work with does in Cobb County. The one good thing about North Star and when you talk about um, other assistance in the community is North Star staff and our agency, Oriana, we partner with a wide variety of different social service agencies in the community. Mm -hmm. um, over the last year, we probably have partnered with over 50 plus social service agencies for a wide variety of needs. In addition to that, uh, North Star is a benefit bank, so we, we have the opportunity to go in and locate um, different assistance for people who come in and need assistance at North Star. Um, the good thing, as Marcus said earlier, is we have, the, it's free, it's open, to everyone and we've partnered with so many people. What we found at Northside, which was really unique, was a lot of the social service agencies had difficult times getting people to come to their agencies for um, various services. Wow. So those individuals were coming to North Star and in conversation and through meetings in the community, we found that partnering and having those agencies work out of North Star for outreach services, it, it began to be overwhelming and agencies were coming to North Star because their people were there. So they, the individuals were getting the services and the agency were pleased, so it worked out for everyone. What's the meaning behind North Star being the name of the company? Well, the North Star is the one star that never moved and it, it's kind of the guiding uh, star for individuals and we believe that North Star is that guiding uh, location where you can get assistance and, and be that guide to success. I love that. <laughs> now I know you mentioned free. Are all services and programs offered through North Star free or do any have a fee? All programs are free. No fee um, to the client. Um, that's one thing that we make sure we hone in on. We start to partner with different agencies. Um, uh, the good thing about it is a lot of agencies um, have outreach dollars and funding that they have. Um, and they just want to reach the clients anyway. So they come into the programs and it's free of service. So anywhere from anger management to GD classes to vouchers for IDs, et cetera, is free. Another thing that we do, uh, we actually just had one last Friday is to speak on how we partner with so many agencies, we do a community resource fair. So we just had one last week and it allows our clients to come to one central location. We have anywhere between 30 and 50 providers from other agencies come in, be under one roof, 
and they can walk around and get all the services and stuff that they need. Um, we usually give them like a light lunch, so we cook like hot dogs and gave them chips, and we gave out like free book bags, had haircuts, so they could bring their kids. The kids got haircuts, so that's something that we do yearly. Um, it's typically used like the third Friday of every July each year. It's an annual thing that we do, but we like that because it gives the clients that chance to meet with other providers and not only just see or hear what we talk about at Northstar, but actually meet them face to face and get the opportunity. That's great. Now, is there anything else you think viewers should know about Northstar and what you offer? Um, I think one of the unique things that's going on at Northstar is we have an adult transitions model. And what that is, is we work with the actual institutions. Um, we go to Grafton, we go to Northeast, and we go to uh, we go Lorraine and Lorraine. We go Lake Erie. Right, and we work with those individuals that are returning home within the last 90 days of their prison sentence and really linking them to North Star, um, preparing them for re-entry back into our community. And what's really um, good about this is we also engage the family members. So prior to their release, they have uh, contact with us. We talk about the goals, the needs. We try to establish uh, some services. We invite the families out to North Star when, when the uh, person returns and just really try to give them a sense of relief and understanding that someone's there to give them assistance. So I would say the one thing just to let the viewers know is, again, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., every Saturday from 9 to 1. We also have a kiosk machine, so I know it might be a lot of viewers that may be watching this, and you have loved ones that might still be incarcerated, and you can't make it to the actual institution or you don't have access to the internet. We have a kiosk uh, machine inside of North Star where loved ones are able to come in and use that kiosk machine to uh, put money on their loved one's books. So if they need like commissary, food, et cetera, while they're in the institution, they can come there and use that kiosk machine. If they want to add money to the phone for their loved ones and call home, they can add that to the kiosk machine. And um, we also have a computer lab um, that's open to anyone. So you don't just have to, with North Star in general, our main focus, again, is helping those individuals that have a criminal background minimize the barriers. But we're also open to individuals that do not have a criminal background. So anybody can come in, they can access the services. Anybody can get a voucher for ID. Anybody can use our computer lab to access the internet, create a resume, job search. So it's open to anyone. Um, our address is 1834 East 55th Street. And hope to see someone out. Phone number, uh, email, phone numbers. website. So our phone number is 216-881-5440. Our website is Northstar Reentry. Dot org. Um, every service or program that we offer is on the website. Um, they can also call in anytime, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and speak with a staff member that will answer the phone. Um, we have a receptionist and several caseworkers, we call them transition specialists, um, that they can get any type of answer. We can help them on the phone. And we also have access to the two-on-one system. So if they're just calling in and learn where the local food pantry is at, or uh, where it's a near soup kitchen, we can give them all the information over the phone. Um, we also can either email it or send something out to them if they need it. That's great. Well, Ilya and Marcus, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you for having, having us. us. And thank you for tuning in to Community Spotlight. Of course, we'll have all this information for you on our blog, tv20cleveland.com. For next time, I'm Leah Haslidge.